Hey guys, welcome to Dynamic Science. In my last video, I asked 5 real life physics questions. I got a lot of responses from viewers like you, thanks for them. And now I'm going to answer those questions. But please watch my previous video if you haven't already yet. In first question, I asked why an ice cube always starts melting from sharp edges like corners. We can define it through continuity equation, which is del dot j is equals to negative time derivative of density. In case of heat flows, the heat current j factor is proportional to negative k gradient of t. Now the continuity equation becomes negative del dot k gradient of t is equals to negative c time derivative of temperature. K del square t is equals to c time derivative of temperature for steady state the time derivative of temperature is zero then the equation becomes del square t is equals to zero which is equivalent to the famous laplace equation which is del square v is equals to zero which implies that t at the boundaries is equivalent to v at the boundaries we know the electric field is proportional to gradient of v Similarly, the heat flows will be proportional to the gradient of T. In case of lightning conductor, the road has a sharp edge because at the sharp edge, the electric field becomes very large. So the gradient of V will be very large at the sharp edge. Similarly, in the case of ice cube, near the edges, the gradient of T becomes very large. So heat flow will be very large at the corners that's why the ice cube always starts melting from the corners in second question i asked when i close the first door then the another door was opens up a little bit automatically we can define it through pascal's law which states that the fluid exerts equal pressure at all the points inside the container in this case, our container is the room and air is the fluid. When I increase the pressure by opening the first door, then there will be increase in pressure of every point inside the room. That's why the another door closes itself a little bit automatically. In third question, I asked how can I ride bicycle without holding its steering and what are the factors? There are two factors that keeps it balanced. First, the background tilt of steering axis. This means when bicycle leans to left or right, then the tilt of axis helps the bicycle steer its wheel back underneath its center of mass. Second, the gyroscopic effect of the front wheel. The gyroscopic precession from the bicycle's leftward lean makes the front wheel towards the left again helping steer its wheel back underneath its center of mass and these are two factors that keeps it balanced in fourth question i asked that why we can't look at the sun at daytime and we can easily see the sun at morning at, at uh, evening time the reason is when at daytime when the sun is totally overhead then the ray coming from the sun creates 90 degree with the earth surface and it crosses only the thickness of one atmosphere that's why the intensity becomes very large but at the evening or at the morning time the ray coming from the sun creates only five degree angle with the earth surface and it has to cross the thickness of 11 atmosphere and that's why the most of the light coming from the sun scatters in the atmosphere and the intensity becomes very less and we can see the sun very easily. In fifth question, I asked why do we use these 15 to 20 thin wires instead of a single thick wire? The reason is that the alternating current has to change its polarity and deep inside the wire it can't do that. And due to the skin effect, the old charges flow through the surface. And the combination of these thin wires provides more surface area compared to a single thick wire. 
that's why we use these thin wires so i hope that uh, you appreciated with my answer but if you still have any queries or doubts then let me know into the comment section thanks for watching and if you really like this video then don't forget to share it with your friends